Welcome back everyone to the French Cooking Academy. My name is Stefan. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. If you're one of my patrons, even more welcome because you are my core supporters. Now today, it's a beautiful day because look at this. I'm sitting, I've improved my setup and I've got the best stool ever for video production. Look at this, wobbly. This is amazing, sorry about the excitement. The second thing that's very important is that we're gonna learn about chocolate. Gone are the days where we can be ignorant about the chocolate. We need to know where it comes from, how it's made and how to handle it in French dessert. So if you want to know all these little things, stay tuned. Welcome back in my little kitchen, office, slash bench. So, chocolate, subject of the day. Why did I want to talk about chocolate? It's very simple because so many times, you know, I've been trying to handle chocolate because first I like to say uh, I'm not the best at baking. And the thing that's my fear is always the chocolate sauce. There's been so many times where we're eating a cake and I was like, ah, you know, you know what, that could do some a nice silky chocolate sauce. And that's what was in my mind. You know, I'll go to my stove, try to melt some chocolate and you end up with some kind of clumpy, oily thing. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one and please be honest, if you've experienced the same, please mention that in the comment section and tell me your experience about the chocolate sauce. I'm sure we are many. So guns are the day about not knowing how to handle chocolate. Uh, this is too simple and too good. We need to know and we need to master that thing. So I've got everything here to talk about it. I've got Google on my left. Let's start with the number one, which is knowing first off, where does it come from? Chocolate, as you can see here, is created from a cocoa bean. I'll put a picture on the screen. It's actually like a fruit that grows on a tree and directly on the bark of a tree. It's not even on a branch. It just grows out of the trunk, comes a fruit. Oh, that's quite amazing. Inside that fruit, you got some beans, uh, and the cocoa beans, but they need to be fermented. And then some chemical reaction happen and they turn into... Uh, these things, that's kind of brownish, uh, what we call the cocoa nibs. Huh? Well, so once they are dried and like this, they are being shipped as a raw product and this is the beginning of the story of chocolate. Next comes the processing part. So what do you do when you get these nibs and what can you transform that thing into to get this beautiful chocolate bar? And for this, I'd like to call the Lazy Susie. Please bring it in. Number one on how lazy Susie is the actual cacao nibs. Uh, this is the raw product uh, coming straight from the tree after it's fermented and dry and stuff like that. And this is what is shipped to chocolate makers and anyone else that want to produce chocolate. This is the whole world of chocolate right in front of your eyes. This is it. This is where it all starts. Once you get this in your factory, you need to process that stuff and most of the time it is like pressed under a massive press and let's see what's happening next. When you actually press and process that thing, you get these two things. On one side, you've got the cocoa butter. This is just the fat part extracted from these cocoa nibs. On the other side, the other product you get as well, is this dry product. So I just had this to show you, but these are the two byproducts of the cacao nibs that we use to make chocolate. As you can see, this is looking actually like uh, white chocolate, but you'll see why after I'll explain this. And once you've got these two things, you can combine them, you can add sugar and all kinds of things or milk or whatever, and you get what we all know as the chocolate bar. It is that simple. Huh? You just seen the whole world of chocolate in front of your eyes. Let, let's go back to the bench. Thank you, Lazy Susie, for all this information. So, next on our ladder of knowledge, we need to know very briefly what are the different types of chocolate. First off is the white chocolate. Now, why is it white? Because it is simply made out of this, the cocoa butter, mixed with sugar and a bit of milk, and you end up with a white chocolate bar. As for some people, they actually don't even call it a real chocolate. The next one is the milk chocolate bar, which is a mix of the, the fat, the cacao butter, with some of the powder, condensed milk or other byproducts, and you end up again with a milky chocolate bar. The last one, which is the one that is commonly used in desserts, is this, the dark chocolate, and this, is a product we're going to be using on Friday 
to make our dessert we're going to learn how to make a french chocolate mousse so do come back on friday it's going to be good but anyway the dark chocolate comes with different uh kind of bitterness huh? and the number you see on there it's a 60 percent 70 percent 80 percent is the amount of cocoa butter so the higher the number uh, the least amount of sugar you're going to have so in this you still have a little bit of the butter fat some sugar but the majority is this product over here huh? so these are the three types of chocolate and by the way I just read online there's a new kind of hipster chocolate that just came out called the ruby chocolate it's coming out apparently in a, in a few months time so it's pink apparently it might be the next best thing but i'm not too sure about that now whew, that was a lot of information at once i'm very sorry and i think that i'm gonna finish with the last things to know which is also the most important is how to handle chocolate in dessert and especially to make sauces to melt it to coat things with it and to make also a chocolate mousse very very important the one thing only you need to remember with this when it comes to chocolate is that the melting point of chocolate is actually lower than the body temperature and i think it starts to melt at about 32 degrees celsius which is like between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit which is very very low and you cannot bring it above anything above like 42 degrees Celsius will start to cause clumps trouble have a grainy chocolate and all this thing and this is why a lot of people including me have failed to make chocolate sauce because you use too much heat and when you melt chocolate it always has to be in a double boiler or in something that's got a very low temperature and do not exceed your body temperature and this is why actually chocolate melts in your hands you see because even your hands are too hot but we're gonna see this in our chocolate mousse video on friday but as a word of warning if you do a chocolate sauce moving forward make sure you take a little thermometer and check your temperature never exceed the 40 degrees and you will have the best silkiest chocolate ever but guys that was a lot of information for today but i really wanted to get this information out so that moving forward we're going to make a few desserts and i want to use some chocolate make some chocolate sauce and see how we can use it and we all need to know this information before we can do some more cooking so please come back on friday for our french chocolate mousse recipe and we're going to try to put all this theory into practice and make some delicious dessert i see you then bye bye